Hello there folks, welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash, I'm your host on this journey through men's style self-development and personal grooming. Like you, I am just a pilgrim on my own individual journey to Chap Nirvana. And part of that pilgrimage for me involves being outdoors and enjoying the pleasures of nature. It's good for mental wellness. And at this time of year, when it gets cold, when it's winter, as it is now, I like to come to my hut here at Oak Lodge in the woodland, particularly around the Christmas period when I've got a bit of time on my hands. And I like to spend time in nature, enjoying the temperatures, the, the environment and the wildlife. And I'm going to use this valuable time to share some of my insights on life with you. I'm going to answer some of the questions which my subscribers, people who pass through the channel, have sent me. And if you've got a question for me, now is the time to send it in. Because if I get the chance between now and the beginning of the new year, uh, when I'm going to be breaking camp here, I will endeavour to answer your question for you. So send it in. It'll be my pleasure as I keep my fire going to keep me warm. So. I've already got some good questions which I've put aside, especially for this occasion. And this first question comes from Dave Porter and he asks me, um, you have an extensive vocabulary, Ash, and easily weave new words into your conversations. I seem to be stuck on vocabulary of my field of employment. Perhaps you can enlighten us on your methods for well-intentioned and purposeful vocabulary? Well, that's a great question, uh, Dave. And, and first of all, thank you for noticing, because I do indeed put a great deal of emphasis on the way that I speak. It's important. I'm a communicator, both professionally, because uh, I, I do earn some of my income as a professional trainer, but also, uh, you know, as a human being. Communication is such an important mechanism of not only transmitting your message, but getting your philosophy across to the people not just friends and family, but those people who are perhaps a little further away in your orbit of influence as well. So, we all possess the ability to be good communicators. I've always fervently believed that we all have the ability to improve our mechanism of speech. As a younger guy, I was a very hesitant speaker, publicly and you know maybe in my social life as well. I was a little shy and as time went on, I certainly gained in my confidence as my opportunities to become a better speaker became you know, more frequent, closer together. So let us not forget that a rich and varied vocabulary enhances uh, our ability to articulate ourselves in all aspects of our lives, not just professionally, socially as well. Think of every occasion today where you've spoken to somebody, be it a co-worker or a stranger. If you could speak a little better, if you could use more perhaps encompassing words in a conversation, it could have changed the direction and the outcome of that conversation. So, and I mean, let's put a, another finer point on it. You know, if I were a stumbling, hesitant and incoherent speaker, I very much doubt that those of you watching this channel would spend more than two minutes in my company as a viewer before you'd have flicked over to somebody else. Uh, so I appreciate your uh, staying with me today. And I'm going to give you some tips now which will help you on your journey to becoming a spoken word athlete shall we say. Okay, now it's unfortunately something I've said and I've sort of emphasised many times, but the best way to increase your vocabulary, to improve the lexicon of words which you use on a daily basis, is to read as widely and as regularly as possible. Because you will, as you read, come across new words, things which you've never seen before, heard before, and you will go and seek out what the meaning is. You will have a look in your dictionary. You will track it down. If you're watching or reading with a, a Kindle, a reading device, if you put your finger on the word, it will normally give you an explanation for that word. You can look it up. So it's a great opportunity to keep adding words to your lexicon. And the way to do it with 
a great deal of you know professionalism is to read from a wide variety of sources. Now I read books, yes, it's become something of a passion for me. This is how I seek my self-improvement these days, by reading. But I don't just read a certain type of book and limit myself to that. I read autobiographies. I read fictional books. I read history books. I read magazines. I read a quality daily newspaper. In fact, I read two. I read The Times and I read The Telegraph newspaper every day here in the UK to try and get a balanced view of the world around me. Now, I read electronically. I don't buy a physical newspaper. I read it on my iPad. So it allows me to absorb a lot of words and a lot of information. And as I come across words, you know, I will see things that I've I like the way it reads in a paragraph, and I will file it away for use at some point in the future. So reading regularly and widely is probably my best tip for improving your vocabulary. Now, very much going hand in hand with extensive reading to increase your lexicon of words, but whilst you've done that, you're never going to remember the words you encounter today, tomorrow. They'll have slipped from your mind, you'll have read other things, they'll have disappeared. The way I make sure I do not forget these words is I keep a journal. Now, I'm not suggesting you keep a journal specifically for, you know, increasing your vocabulary. It will help, but in the back of my journal, if I find a word that I rather like, I will make a note of it. And every so often, in the back here, I will go and have a look to look through those words and think, ah, I could have used that in something I did in work or in a conversation I had maybe yesterday. And it will help to remind me to use that word in the future. And the other thing is, and it's a well-researched fact, when you write something down, it solidifies it far greater in the mind, in the memory, than just saying, oh, I like that word, I'm going to remember it in the future. Write it down, that extra act of physically writing a word down and then having it for reference. Well, that'll make all the difference when it comes to remembering it and using it in the future. Now, the other way I will recommend for you, which I do a lot of, which will increase your vocabulary at the same time as having fun, is playing word games. Now, as a family, and I've got a teenage son, right, so as a family, we've always enjoyed the act of sitting down and playing board games and other sort of fact-based games. Uh, we're, not, we're not a Victorian family, don't get me wrong, right, we do watch the TV and have a laugh as well, but we do enjoy playing Scrabble and we do enjoy playing Boggle. Now, these are two games which are easy to get into, very easy to play. They can be quick and swift, particularly with Boggle. And they allow you to let your mind search for new words. And sometimes you write something down and you think, crikey, that's not the way to spell it. You'll go and look for it, look it up, and then realize, and you will learn. This is how we constantly learn. Now, I have a bit of an ongoing rivalry with my wife, Rachel, because she is a champion boggle player and we play you know best of five after dinner my son's gone to watch the tv watching cartoons or whatever and we'll stay at the dinner table me and rachel and we will have best of five games of boggle they only take three minutes per game and you know suddenly you're sort of desperately searching the crevices of your mind to find you know a five letter word which can win the game in your favor so little things like this constantly letting your mind be open to absorbing new words and then using those words in a practical application even if it's playing a game is a great way to learn and have fun at the same time now one thing you can do to improve your vocabulary is just keep a dictionary on your desk or have one to hand at the very least. Now, I do this every single day. I've got a dictionary on my desk and sometimes, you know, if I'm on a quite a boring Zoom meeting or something like that, I'll pick up my dictionary and I'll just flick through it. And I will be amazed at the number of words in the English language that I've never encountered which are good, usable words, you know, descriptive words, doing words that I don't regularly use in my own vocabulary. And the way that I expand my vocabulary is to set myself that goal. Learn one word a day. When I see it in the dictionary, I'll write it in the back of my journal. And then I make the, the aim that I'm going to use that word within the next 24 hours in some application. I'm playing a little mind game with myself. And in so doing, 
it is without doubt, in my mind, the best way I have found to learn a word a day. Don't go nuts, maybe just Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Monday to Friday, whatever you want to do. But just one word a day. Familiarize yourself with words that you don't commonly use, and before you know it, you'll be expanding that lexicon of words in conversations, in your written word, and you will become a word athlete. Now, what you want to do to solidify all of those words which you're learning, which you're absorbing, is to make use of them. This is by far the best way that you're going to remember them. And the way to do that is to write regularly. Now, when I say write regularly, it doesn't mean you've got to write long, flourishing letters to your grandmother or things like that. What I do, I keep a daily journal. It's an opportunity to do a little bit of writing every day, keeps my cursive handwriting up to scratch, and it allows me to exercise my vocabulary in the written word. It doesn't have to be writing in a journal or a diary. It could be blogging. It could be, you know, just being a little bit more creative in the way that you construct your emails or text messages or WhatsApp messages. Think of it as a creative writing exercise rather than condensing the words down to as few as possible, which actually what most people do in the world today. They don't really exercise their vocabulary. They use it to get smaller and smaller. As little as possible is the way most people write these days. But if you try and apply yourself to the opposite direction, use the words that you're learning, they're going to stick in the brain and they are going to become soon part of the usable vocabulary that you have at your disposal. So write regularly. Now, going hand in hand with writing regularly is another tool which is really overlooked by people today, but I always have one within three feet of my desk at any given time, and that is a thesaurus. Now, just so as we're on the same page here, a thesaurus is like a dictionary, but it is an alternative collection of words for the words which you are seeking. So if you look at the word big, for instance, there are probably 20 different words which have the same descriptive meaning as the word big. So when you're writing a paragraph, you have the ability to not use big over and over again. You can use big, you can use large, you can use huge, you can use gargantuan, leviathan, however descriptive as you wish to be. And the thesaurus is the tool which will provide these words for you. Now you can get small ones which you can carry around in your briefcase, or quite a large one which you have on your desk. I keep both so that I've always got the opportunity to reach for it when I'm looking for a new word. I do it all the time. When I'm writing notes for my videos, if I think, oh, I've used that word too many times in this conversation already, what other word can I have for whatever it may be? I will look it up in the thesaurus and I will choose from the collection of alternatives which have been provided for my use. Keep a thesaurus to hand and you will always have a nice collection of words in your lexicon of vocabulary. Well, Dave, there we go. I've given you some tips that I personally use to improve the way that I speak and to certainly flesh out the number of words at my disposal in conversations, when I make videos, when I'm writing. And actually, even if you, uh, you know, you are not particularly well educated, like I'm not. I didn't go to university. I'm just an ordinary guy who did an, you know, basic schooling, went out into the world to cut my path. I didn't have a higher education, but I made the the objective of, you know, at least being able to communicate well using the words which I've been given. And if I expand that collection of words, my communication skills get broader and broader, and it gives people the impression that you're interested in communication, you're effective, and you can use words in a powerful way. So I hope that's helped you to become a word athlete in your life. And we can talk about the mechanism, the cadences of speech which I employ, maybe in another video. If you're interested, you can ask me a question on that and I'd be happy to answer it. So if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, click the subscribe button. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do that simply by leaving a comment below or even dropping me an email. And if you'd like to practically support the channel, you could buy me a coffee. It's a one-off thing, or you can become a patron. Uh, by becoming a patron, which costs as little as three pounds a month, you can benefit from the additional weekly videos which I produce for my patrons and also the ongoing unique dialogue which I have with my patrons and you will find the links to all of that in the show notes below this video. 
So until the next time, use your words to best effect and I will see you again very soon.